Hi, in this tutorial we'll be looking at another Topaz product. In the last tutorial we looked at Topaz Sharpen AI, a very powerful software package allowing us to extract fine detail from deep sky astronomical images. In this tutorial we'll be looking at a product called Denoise AI and the interface on this software is very similar to that in Sharpen AI but the end result of course will be to smooth the noise in our astronomy images. So we can start off by clicking on file and then open images and then we'll open our astronomical image. At the moment I'm using uh, Topaz Denoise as a standalone program rather than uh, as a plug-in for Photoshop but when we look at a second image in a minute I'll actually run the, the software from within Photoshop. Now when the image opens on the screen, as with Sharpen AI, we've got the option to, to change the zoom strength if you like, uh, it's on default of 100 and that tends to work quite well for me so I'll leave it at that for now. And also as with Sharpen AI, you have a kind of before and after slider. As you move the slider across the screen, on the right hand side is the smooth image and on the left hand side is the, the image before the smoothing has been applied and you can just move this slider backwards and forwards to assess certain parts of the image. When I'm using these Topaz programs I find it quite useful to actually switch the auto setting on and see what the software thinks is best for the image. It doesn't always work but it gives you a good starting point. At the moment as you can see on the screen there's just two options, Denoise AI and AI Clear. I believe AI Clear might be an earlier version of Denoise AI, but for, for most purposes, I just use Denoise AI. And then below that are just two sliders, Remove Noise and Sharpen. Now this is what the auto setting has done to the image, and it's certainly applying some noise reduction I like to then come into the sliders in a little bit more detail and fine tune the level of adjustment to suit the image. So for example I think we could actually turn the remove noise slider up a little bit here. Let's try something like about 26 and as always as you saw there uh, it generates a small preview. There's a delay just a few seconds while it sort of recalculates the adjustments. Yep I think that's probably worked a little bit better. The sharpen slider might be a little bit high. Um, let's try taking that down. Because remember, we're actually trying to smooth the image. Uh, let's just try taking that down to, let's try 10, for example, see how that works. Um, yeah, I think that, that looks quite good. So let's drag the slider backwards and forwards and assess how well this has worked. I hope you can see on the screen, I, I certainly think this is working very well. What we see on the screen at the moment, the majority of the screen was the original image and um, with the slider actually just being dragged across to the left, it's done a very, very good job. Let's just pause for a minute perhaps and think about why we need to apply um, smoothing to an image in the first place. Well, it comes down to the signal to noise ratio of an image in most cases and this is um, how strong the signal is compared to how the background noise is recorded and if you're imaging faint objects perhaps using narrow band filters or if you're only working with a limited number of sub exposures and on this particular image of IC 1396 or to be more pedantic the elephant trunk nebula I've just combined four 10 minute exposures here which were taken with a six inch refractor so because we're using a narrow band filter, the signal to noise ratio isn't all that strong. Now, of course, as you go on to record more and more sub exposures, and then if you're able to combine something like 30 10 minute exposures, then the signal to noise ratio really, really improves and the image becomes a lot less noisy. But for a lot of us, it's not always practical to work with that level of sub exposures. So if we're working with just maybe two or three or something like that, then we can call upon these powerful noise reduction routines to help smooth the image out. Now, in my last tutorial, I mentioned that to open a monochrome image in Sharpen AI, it was necessary to convert it to an RGB image first. 
and then sharpen AI I could open the image quite happily. Well since I put that tutorial together there's been uh, an upgrade to both Sharpen AI and Denoise AI and they both now will open monochrome images without having them converted to RGB files first. So that's great, that makes life a lot easier. It just saves having to do the conversion. So let's assume we're happy with this. Uh, it's certainly looking quite good. If you look carefully at the star images, you can see that they're not really changing that much. The software really is just working on on the uh, noisier parts of the image. So once we're happy with it, the image, we just come down to where it says save image, click on that and it brings up the save image as box. Most of this is just the default settings. You can change it if you wish, but there's no need to in most cases. So for example, the image format is TIFF, which it is. I've got no compression on it at the moment. Well, it's showing LZW. Bit depth, 16-bit, um, we should always be working in 16-bit images, and save directory, the source directory is where the image was actually opened from. So we want to save the, this image to the same directory, so we can just leave that on source. If you wanted it into a different directory, just click on custom and choose the directory of your choice. Color profile, well it says Pro Photo RGB, it's actually a monochrome image at the moment, I'm not going to worry too much about that. And then Last and certainly not least, the file name, this thing here, um, the IC1396HA was the original file name and the software has actually just put a little addendum on the end to say denoise and this is to distinguish it from our earlier image. We don't want to overwrite our earlier image so the software's put this on just to keep it separate and then once you're happy with everything that's on here just click save. Now, it does take a little bit of time to do the processing, depending on the speed of your computer. It's running through at the top of the screen here. Um, you can see that it's just running through this. That's not taking too long, so that's fine. And that's it, the image is done. So we can close this down now, I'll just minimize it for now, and we'll go back into Photoshop. Oops, I'll look at that in a minute. And this is our original image. And as I've zoomed in, because it is just four 10 minute exposures, it's possible to see that the background is quite noisy. So let's open our recently modified image using the noise. And here it is. Now this looks remarkably different to me. What I'm gonna do here, just to make life easier, so we can do a direct comparison, I'm gonna select this image I've copied it into the clipboard and what I'm going to do is actually paste it on top of the original image. Now let's first of all once again just look at the original. It's not a bad image, the signal to noise ratio isn't catastrophically bad but as we zoom in you can start to see this, this noise in the background. Now if I then switch to the modified version you can see it's much, much cleaner. Now this is really nice. It's not overly um, softened the image. In the previous tutorial, I'll refer to an effect where if you over soften an image, it can look a bit sort of made of plastic almost. And that's not a good thing at all. It's very unnatural. But this is really nice and smooth. The sky background's great. Star images are good. It's done a really nice job. Tick back to the earlier one see the before and after. So that's great, that's worked very well, I'm happy with that. The next thing we can do is we'll apply Topaz Denoise from within Photoshop and the way you do that is just click to open your image and this time we'll open a hydrogen alpha image of NGC 3576 also known as the Statue of Liberty Nebula and this was taken with the Chile 1 telescope. This is made up of four 10 minute exposures and actually, the signal to noise ratio of this image is very good. If we zoom in, there is a little bit of background noise, just a little bit of graininess or unevenness in the image. That's perfectly normal. So what I'd like to show you with this image, we won't need anywhere near the level of noise reduction on this image compared to the one I showed you earlier on. So once we have the image open on the screen, the way that we access the Topaz software, in the same way as before with um, Topaz Sharpen AI, we click on Filter, and as we come down, you can see now 
that um, Topaz Labs is greyed out. So it, there seems to be a strange scenario where if you're running the software as a standalone program, it will open the 16-bit monochrome images quite happily. If you fire up Topaz software within Photoshop, you then have to do the conversion, which seems a little bit odd, but it's really nothing. That, it's not a problem at all. We just have to go image mode and then RGB color. It seems a bit weird to me that the standalone version opens those images quite happily. Photoshop doesn't, but it's not a problem. Once the image is on screen, and we've done that conversion, it's Filter, Topaz Labs, and then Denoise AI. The software fires up in the same way, except this time we've got the image open on the screen. Now, because the signal-to-noise ratio of this image is much better than the previous image, we're going to have to reduce the strength of the softening. Let's just click on the Auto button as usual, just see what the software would like to do with the image. And, well, it's not done too bad a job. Let's try and find um, a noisier part of the image, generally in the sky background or fainter nebulosity. Yeah, you can see down here it's a little bit noisy. So, if we drag the before and after slider, yeah, it's actually done a quite a good job. I think what I'd be inclined to do on this image, just looking at it on screen, I think what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to take the remove noise slider up not very far, just something like about six. And I'm gonna take the sharpening right down this time, because it does seem to be over sharpening the images. In fact, let's take it right off and see what it does to the image. Well, I think that's personally better. Um, if we look at the uh, the before and after, yeah, that's, um, that's looking quite good. Really, that's as, as difficult as it gets. It's just a case of assessing your own images and adjusting those two sliders to suit the level of noise in your own images. And of course, this can be applied to color images as well. And of course, you won't have to do the conversion on them, that strange conversion we looked at earlier on. So if we're happy with that, let's click on Apply. As usual, it does the processing. Shouldn't take too long. It will save the image as a new version. It hasn't actually saved it, it's just placed it on screen as a new version. And yeah, that looks to me like it's, it's done a very, very good job in the background there. So we can compare, and I'll just do this off screen using Photoshop's history. So in fact, I'll bring, I'll bring it on screen so I can show you what I'm doing. Here we have the denoised version. Before that, where it says RGB color, that was previous to applying the noise reduction. So if I click on the earlier state, yep, that's worked really well. There isn't much noise there, there's low level noise, but when we compare the before and the after, it's really smoothed it out nicely. It's not done any damage at all to the star images. It, has, it looks like it's sharpened them a tad to me anyway, even though we took the sharpening right off. And then we actually have a look at some of the some of the brighter nebulosity, this probably isn't going to make too much difference. Just a little bit of noise in the sky background here, in the faint nebulosity, um, that's looking really good. And then what you can do, if you're happy with that result, you can just click onto the final state, then just do File, Save As, and then to distinguish it from the earlier version, we can just call it 35760D Noise, or any other thing to just keep it separate and click save. Yep, that's all okay. Job done. So hope, like me, you'll, you'll agree that it's nice, intuitive, easy to use software and it certainly does a good job on these images that perhaps aren't as strong as they could be or taken perhaps with moonlight in the sky which might you know, make them a little bit noisier. Um, but whatever happens, if you fine tune those sliders within the Denoise software, I think you'll find you'll get a really good end result as we have here. Now we can look at how well Topaz Denoise AI works with color images. And uh, the image on the screen is quite uh, an astonishing image in a way because although it's an image of the North American Nebula taken with narrow band filters, it actually comprises of just one single sub-exposure per filter a 450 second long sub-exposure. 
And this is quite unusual because normally when we're taking deep sky images, we take lots and lots of sub exposures to build up the signal to noise ratio, as I mentioned earlier on. Well, we can zoom in on this image and check to see what the noise levels are like and predictably enough with just a single 450 second sub exposure per filter there will be some background noise in the image the brighter parts are quite good in fact they're astonishingly good for the uh, the short length of exposure time so we can call upon denoise ai to, to work on this image and let's just see how well it works to reduce this this background noise so as usual we'll launch the plugin we're working from within photoshop so as usual it's just filter topaz labs denoise ai and you can see on the screen this image and, and that topaz denoise has just applied a, a rudimentary process to it as before we can click on the auto button let's just see how how it does it looks like it's done a fairly good job as we move the slider to the left we can see the before and after process on the image and I think we can probably take this a little bit further I think for this image let's try taking the sharpen slider right the way down and we'll click on the re remove noise button and we'll take this right up to let's try something like about 80 odd and see how that performs it's looking quite good so the before on the left the after on the right it certainly smoothed the image over so let's click on apply we'll let denoise ai apply the process and as before once it's finished it will close down the package and uh, revert us to photoshop okay so this is what it's done to the image we can zoom right in this is a particularly nice part of the nebula the so-called cygnus wall and it's one of the brightest parts of the image so it always records fairly well now if we click back one stage i'll do that just off screen using photoshop's history menu if we look around here you can see that Topaz Denoise has done a remarkably good job. So we can be quite pleased with that. It's definitely smoothed the image over. So you know, if you're working with a very limited number of sub exposures, it's worth considering the use of Topaz Denoise AI because as you can see from this image, it's done a really good job. That's it. I'll see you in the next one.